Alright, hello. So this guide is for new and or returning players who came to Elsor during the full growth support event that started on December 16th, 2020 and is going to January 12th, 2021. The goal of this guide is to orient players who may be lost at what to do and or overwhelmed by all the changes in the game since they last played. This guide assumes that you already claimed all the rewards possible for this event and the event I'm referring to is linked in the description. This guide only covers the main key points. For more detailed information on how to progress in Elsword, please refer to the free to play PvE progression guide linked in the description. So the first thing you want to do is decide on a main. There are currently 13 characters and 40 classes you can pick from in Elsword, and while you can make up to 52 characters on a single account, with the way the game works, it is most efficient and highly recommended to pick a main. Your main is a character that you solely focus on and play the most. This guide assumes that one of the characters you made from the growth event is a character you plan to main. If neither of the characters you made from the growth event are characters you want to main, then please refer to the PBE free to play progression guide linked in the description. Other characters you make on your account are referred to as your alts and elsewhere. The event roughly left players somewhere in the 12x region. Your next goal in the game should be to get to a point where you can farm Rosa Raid. Rosa Raid is not your typical dungeon, so farming it is a bit unique. To farm Rosa Raid, your roadmap looks something like this. So the first thing you want to do is gear your main. The second thing you want to do is farm ED and ERP on your main. And then the third thing you want to do is use the ED and ERP you farmed on your main to make alts to farm Rosa Raid. The fourth thing you want to do is to farm Rosa Raid on your alts. And then the last thing you want to do, the fifth thing you want to do is to move the rewards you get from Rosa Raid on your alts to your main. This is a very convoluted and not straightforward progression, but it's arguably the most efficient way for new and or returning players to progress to the end game. You get a plus sign apocalypse type void weapon from this event. The apocalypse type void weapon is generally known simply as a void weapon in the community. There are a few things you need to do to ensure you are getting the most out of this weapon. The first thing you want to do is wedge your weapon and the second thing you want to do is socket your weapon. For information on wedging and socketing, please refer to the socketing guide linked in the description. And the third thing you want to do is to mystic enhance your weapon. For information on how to mystic enhance your void weapon, please refer to the Powering Up Your Void Weapon Energy Discs and Mystic Zones section of the Void Weapon Guide linked in the description. So from this event, you should have gotten 50 Sage Stones that you can use as sockets, and also you should have gotten a Yellow Stage 5 Disc, so you don't have to grind that. You also get a plus 9 4 out of 4 El Reynode Armor set from this event. There are a few things you need to do to ensure you're getting the most out of this armor. The first is to wedge your armor, the second is to socket your armor, and the third is to change the L tiers on your armor. A Reynode armor pieces have a balance, transformation, destruction, and proficiency effect. The free armor you get from the event comes with the following effects that are on the screen right now. The effects on El Reynode armor can be freely changed. To do that, first you need to obtain an L tier with the effect you want. There are multiple ways to obtain L tiers, but the most efficient way is to buy the one you want off the board. I would recommend typing in the color, blue for magical, red for physical, and the effect you want to search for tiers. Make sure you buy the part you want. For example, if you want to replace the destruction effect for your top piece, make sure you buy a top piece. Then you want to go to Arena Village, talk to the NPC Denef, and select the L tier assembly option to change your L tiers. As for my recommendations for how to improve the Arena armor you got from this event, for a balance or triangle effects, the highest you can go to is L tier level 29. You get L tier level 20 from the free armor. However, I would highly not recommend investing a lot of ED to improve these effects because a higher L tier level makes you more tanky, which is largely irrelevant for PvE. If you happen to get a drop with a higher L tier level, by all means feel free to use it. For destruction or square effects, you want to get a skill that is good for your class. If you are not sure what skill you should be getting for your square effects, please refer to the Google Spreadsheets linked in the description. The highest percent you can get is 12%, but I think 8-10% to is sufficient enough. As for proficiency or hexagon pieces, for your top piece, you can replace the one in the free armor with parties polarized attack attack to damage plus 9% or 10%. For the bottom piece, you can replace it with parties physical or magical attack power plus 9% or 10%. For the gloves, you can replace that one with all skill damage plus 40% or 44%. And finally, for the shoes, I would replace it with ignores enemies physical or magical defense 8-10%. to 10%. That stat will greatly improve your CP, which is really good for trying to get your Rosa Raid alts into Rosa Raid and way down the road also help your alts get into Birth Raid. And then for the transformation or circle effects, you want to replace the critical damage 1% with either critical damage 2% or 3%.
And as far as accessories go, for new and or returning players, I would recommend the accessory build that is on the screen right now. For more information on how to get those accessories, etc., please refer to the PV accessory guide linked in the description. And as far as titles go, you do get Pierce the Heavens from the event, but it is temporary. So the title you can use after it expires is Amazing Adventurer. As for what title to farm next, you want to go for um, the Rules of the Jungle. And then the title you want to farm for after that is Guardian of Secret Closed Space. And for more information on titles, please refer to the title guide linked in the description. And don't forget to complete the level 80 transcendent skill quest and the level 90 transcendent skill quest. These can be done at the same time. Both should be under the mission tab. Both these passes are generally significantly important to your class, so it's important to remember to do these two. So the next step you want to do is to farm ED and ERP on your main. So the first thing you want to do is unlock ERP. So L resonance points, also known as ERP, in Elsword is very important. So for your main, your main focus should be to level up your ERP and or to make ED. You can unlock ERP when you reach level 99 for the first time on an account. To unlock ERP, complete the epic quest, another power L resonance. So it should be... Where is it? Right here. Another power L resonance. You complete this quest to unlock ERP on your account. To open the ERP page, you want to press the tilde, so this button, and then you'll pull up the ERP page. For your main, you want to invest your ERP into EXP game first, and after that you want to put it in item drop rates. This is so you can better farm ERP and ED for your alt so they can enter Rosa Raid. For your alt, you want to invest your ERP into active tenacity, strength, and bravery skill damage then polarize attack attack damage, and then damage of the boss monsters. This is so you can better hit the CP requirement to farm Rosa Raid. So to boost your EXP gain, there are some things you can do as a newer player. So you want to use the title Rules of the Jungle or the title Guardian of Secret Closed Space. And you want to get the Hot Spring buff. To get the Hot Spring buff, you either want to teleport to Spirit Falls or Charming Geyser. And you can get the buff by either standing in the water or talking to Serena and buying it like this. So next thing you want to do is join a guild. Some guilds will invest guild skill points into EXP, so you will gain up to a 15% boost in EXP when you join certain guilds. So for our guild, on our guild skill page 1, we have the 5 guild skill points in EXP, so you will get 15% EXP boost if you join our guild. You can also get an 100% EXP boost medal from Ariel for 5 L rewards. You can get L rewards from doing the daily or weekly SP quest, and or by tossing barriers fragments at either Tree and Ellison. So this is the daily SD quest and this is the weekly SD quest. And this is a tree that you can toss barrier fragments at for a chance of getting other rewards. You can get barriers fragments from SD dungeons, so secret dungeons, or buying them off the board. So another way to increase your EXP gain is to equip your pet with gem of skills. The main way to get gem of skills is to buy them off the board, so you want to buy the ones that increase your EXP gain. And then after you do that, you can equip it to your pet for more EXP gain. And then for a full list of everything you can do in Elsewhere to boost your EXP gain and detailed explanations for everything, please refer to the EXP gain guide linked in the description. So what should you farm for EXP? So as a new and a returning player, I would recommend you farm Secret Dungeons, Add Fusion Theory Dungeon, aka Add Dungeon or Board Dungeon, and then either 11.4, 11.3, or 12.8, but this depends on how much gear you have and what you can farm comfortably and if you can find people to farm with. And you also want to try to fish every day. For more information on fishing, please refer to the LWiki link linked in the description. So what should you do to make ED? So one thing you can do is to complete your epic quest starting from Landlocks. So starting from chapter 17 and above, each of these quests give a decent amount of ED when you complete them. And epic quests are once per character, so you can make more characters for the sake of epic quests. And similar to EXP, you want to farm SD Dungeons, The Void Dungeon, 11.4, 11.3, or 12.8. And for more in-depth information on how to make ED and elsewhere, please refer to the guide linked in the description. And now let's move on to step 3 and 4, which is to make Rosa Raid Alts and to farm Rosa Raid. And in order to understand how to make Rosa Raid alts, it's important to understand how Rosa Raid works. So what is Rosa Raid? Rosa Raid refers to the dungeons 12.5, 12.6, and 
you must do 12-5 before doing 12-6 and you must do 12-6 before doing 12-7. So most players do all three dungeons in a row. This is collectively known as Rosa Raid or Gaunt. So what is farming Rosa Raid? Rosa Raid is not your typical dungeon. You only can get drops and rewards from the raid the first time you clear each week. Each dungeon has three phases. Each phase will drop a mystic stone. Each phase you clear will also give you a reward cube that will give you a random mystic stone. So you get one cube for every phase you clear. So in total, you will get 18 mystic stones. These mystic stones can be sold on the board for a decent amount of ED. So because you can only get rewards from Rosa Raid once per week per character, to farm Rosa Raid, you need to do it on multiple characters each week. Rosa Raid is generally a party of six people. Only one to two of these people actually have to do damage. For the other four people, players will normally take supporters as long as they can enter. So to farm Rosa Raid, you want to make as many support characters as possible to run on. So what classes should you make? Not all classes are good support for Rosa Raid, so you need to make certain classes. In terms of what you should make, this is a priority list from highest to lowest. So number one is Radiant Soul, number two is Comet Crusader, number three is Blue Hen, number four is Daybreaker, number five is Shakti, number six is Oz Sorcerer, number seven is Epsara, number eight is a tie between Aether Sage and Metamorphy, and number nine is Centurion. So how do you hit the secret apartment? After you make these classes, you need to get them to CP 332.5k in order to enter the raid. You can easily hit the CP requirement as a free-to-play player with a plus 9 SD weapon and the plus 9 4 to 4 L reload armor you got from the event. For detailed information on how to hit the CP requirement, please refer to the video linked in the description. And then obviously you need to understand the dungeon mechanics, so for guides for 12.5, 12.6, and 12.7, please refer to the description as well. And after you have the correct classes and you have reached the CP requirements, you can look for a Rosa Raid party. To find a Rosa Raid party, you want to join the Operation Aura Discord server, which is linked in the description. You shouldn't be trying to find a Rosa Raid party through queue. The most common way to find a Rosa Raid party is through the Discord server that I linked in the description. So why is farming Rosa Raid so important? From the growth events, you get a plus 9 apocalypse type void weapon. The next weapon you want to aim for is a Flames of Judgment demonic weapon, also known as FOJ, that you get from farming Rosa Raid. The weapon drops as a cube that can be bank shared, so once you get it, you can move it to your main. The second reason is Rosa Raid also gives some of the strongest accessories in the game. These also drop as bank shareable cubes as well, so once you get them on your ult, you can move them to your main. Rosa Raid, as mentioned earlier, gives you 18 refined and or shiny mystic stones every gaunt. This can either be sold for a decent amount of ED or saved later to mystic enhance your own FOJ. Rosa Raid is one of the most profitable options for newer players to make ED. Rosa Raid also does not require you to do any damage. As a support, you just need to focus on supporting and surviving. You are not expected to, nor need to do damage. And finally, the last reason is that making all characters is beneficial for your account in the long run as well. Radiant Cell and Blue Hen are both a part of the resurrection synergy that you will need later on for endgame content. Epsara and Shakti both give solid farming synergies that you can consider later on. Centurion gives damage reduction when registered in Elsa's Party Collection that is important for endgame content. When you make a new character, you also can do the epic quest again for ED. TLDR, making alt characters with Rosa Raid is hitting multiple birds with one stone. And for more detailed information on Rosa Raid farming, please refer to the video linked in the description. And finally, the last thing you want to do is move everything you've farmed on your alt back to your main. The rewards you hopefully are getting on your Rosa Raid alt should be the FOJ, Exodia, and Mystic Stones. After you sell the Mystic Stones or ED, these are the things you should prioritize buying for your main. You want to invest and get Rare Headhunter. You want to also get an ERP page, a plus 11 amulet, the accessory Demonic Vine Crown, the accessory Agate Fragment, and an IV costume, Cloud of Five, and an IV weapon. So to conclude and to wrap things up, things you want to do daily as a new or returning player is the special dungeon, Dimension of Sinister Intent. So you want to do this one five times a day. You also want to do certain event dungeons as they will give you a free pet, free fetch aura, costumes, skill cut-ins, and custom awakening. You also want to do your daily SD quest, your daily void quest. You also want to make sure you're fishing every day, and you can try the heroic daily quest, and you also want to get in your free love and five run, if you can. And then as for things that do weekly, you want to do Rosal Raid on your alts. And for things to work on general, you want to work on making Rosal Raid alts doing your epic quests and farming SDs, Void Dungeon, 11.4, 11.3, and or 12.8. And to end this video, once again, I want to emphasize that this was a very broad overview of what to do. I would highly recommend referring to the free-to-play PvE progression guide for more detailed information that's linked in the description.